Okay, here we go with our next layout. Okay, so um, first thing is decide which paper you want to use. I'm going with a, a, a jungle theme because she loves going to the zoo. I don't have a zoo theme. This is the bit, next best thing. So, um, so this is going to be my background and I chose a solid piece of cardstock to complement the layout. And this is going to be the piece that fits on the entire base page. It goes from edge to edge, but I didn't want to waste the paper. So I cut out the inside so I could use it. So this is my edge to edge. And then my main design piece will go centered so that we have a little border of that solid cardstock. Okay, so we can actually just go ahead and adhere those right down. So then from that same cardstock, this col you know, the complementary color, you could use white, your base, you know. Um, I cut a piece for a pocket. And this measures <clears throat> seven inches by three and a half. So you're gonna put that in your scoreboard with the long end at the top, and you're gonna score it one half from both ends. And then with the short end at the top, you're gonna score it one half. So go ahead and cut off those two corners that uh, look like squares where the score lines intersected and then fold and burnish <clears throat> and then you've got a pocket. So that is going to go down here, but we're not going to glue it just yet. Uh, linked to this video, I have a Silhouette Studio file that you can use if you want to cut these and make it so much quicker. These are going to be little window frames or little picture frames uh, with crafters plastic. But if you don't have that, I will show you how to cut these by hand. So what you need for these two frames, two pieces, three and a half by four. And you are going to Measure in one and one eighth of an inch, and you're just going to draw a line, okay? And then on the other side, these are the two shorter sides, okay? You're measuring in one and one eighth. And you're drawing a line. And then on the longer edge, the one that's thicker, so not that one, but the one that's thicker, you're also measuring in one and one eighth, and you're drawing a line, okay? And from the other longer edge, the one that is skinnier or thinner, you're just measuring in three eighths of an inch, and you're gonna draw a line. So when you're done, you will have a perfect square, just like mine. I should say the four lines that you drew will intersect to create a perfect square and just cut that out. Do the same thing with a second piece that measures four by three and a half. And then cut off those little square corners. No. Full, okay, oh yes. Well, you can cut the corners off first, but ideally you wanna score first, I'm sorry. So on those three sides that are thicker, Okay, not the little skinny side, but on the three sides that are thicker, you want to score it one half an inch. So then you've made three by three photo frames. Thank you. 
And if you are cutting your frames by hand, um, I have a very hard time with this. I simply do not do it. I either use, I either create it in Silhouette Studio or I, or I just use strips. So you could just cut four strips and glue them down. That would work very, very well, depending on your design paper. Okay, so prepare those two frames. And then to finish them off, you need two pieces of cardstock, of decorative paper, and two pieces of craft, crafter's plastic, and those are gonna go inside the frames. So if my frames from edge to edge are three by three, you want these to be about a 16th of an inch shorter and these as well. So just a 16th of an inch shorter. So we'll take our frames and we will apply uh, this quarter inch score tape because our um, the borders of our frames are three eighths of an inch wide, so I'm going to use one quarter inch of score tape. And I'm going to use it on the actual frame itself, not the flaps. my crafter's plastic and place it in the frame. I'm just going to line it up. All right, so we're going to make sure it lines up. It doesn't pass this edge and all the flaps do shut without our plastic buckling. And then we can go ahead and adhere it down. to take my paper, my decorative paper, and I'm gonna set that inside. Same thing, make sure that these fold down without buckling the paper, otherwise I might have to trim it. If it's a directional paper, make sure it's facing the direction you want. Okay, and then I'm going to, holding it in place so it doesn't slide, I am going to put glue on the backs of my half inch flaps of the frame itself and glue those to the paper. As you can see, I didn't completely create this border correctly. There's a, there's a bigger space on the inside than there is on the outside, but that is okay. I like it. I still think it looks great. Okay, so. This is a pocket and I'm going to adhere my two frames to it. Make sure your openings are at the top. That's super important.
Okay, so I have another piece of paper. I have another piece of just scrap of paper that for layering. I'm gonna position that right about there. And this is gonna go here. And then from that, all right, from your base cardstock, whatever piece of, you know, solid cardstock that coordinates with your um, collection. Well, yeah, so we'll all start with these. So I found these from Creative Fabrica, um, which I've mentioned quite a few times throughout the series that I um, just bought, bought a, a subscription <laughs> to them and I get, I can download as many assets as I want. And many of them are for commercial use. I'm pretty sure that's where this came from. Oh, maybe this one came from Etsy. You know what? I think this one came from Etsy and it's for, yeah, I'll have to double check that. But anyways, I found these and they pretty much perfectly measured eight by six. I cut them, a, I trimmed them just a little bit. Um, yeah, they're seven and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And then I folded them exactly in half and I'm putting them all within one another. I'm nesting them inside each other. And then I took my coordinating cardstock and made it just an eighth of an inch bigger. Okay. So it's basically the same side, but an eighth of an inch bigger. So that if I were to lay them on top of each other, I've got my little border all the way around. I also folded that one in half. And then I'm going to put this inside of that piece. So when we open it up, it's like a little booklet. But the opposite sides, she can journal or put a picture if she really wants to. And then the center for journaling. So I, uh, I've never done one of these before. Let me think, do I, I, I think I'm gonna staple it. I think I'm gonna put a staple here and here, but I definitely am going to use this to keep the book shut. And then I have another piece of ephemera or whatever decoration you wanna use that will go on the center. Oh, I hope I don't mess this up. And actually, will this fit? Yeah, will it? look at that. Perfect fit. Oh, yes, it's pretty good. That one was pretty good too. Oh, goodness, I wonder if I should have stapled it to this. should or shouldn't have. <clears throat> I probably should have. <clears throat> okay, well this is definitely gonna get adhered
And in case I didn't mention it, this paper in my hand that I'm gluing down is from Graphic 45. I think it's called Safari Adventure, as well as inside the frames. Everything else you see here, except, well, these are also Graphic 45. But everything else you see here, I believe, like I said, it came from Etsy, but I will link that below. Okay, so now that I know that's where I want it, I can get this adhered down. So I think, um, well, this is basically our page, so we are pretty much done. So if you want any other little decorations, feel free to add. I'll probably find a panda bear and maybe put him here. And I might do something with a couple of these. Um, I'm undecided, but do any final decorating uh, touches and you're all set. And we will see you in the next layout.